started this, oh, I had you touch somebody and tell them that you were there for them. They're there for you now, too. They're there for you, and you've come a long way. You're a team. You're everything right now. You're not good. You're great. You're all mess. Believe that. Know that. I can feel it from you. They need to see it from you. This time, right here. Bring us to a new level. Bring Ole Miss on the map like it's never been before. Do it for each other. Give everything you got and leave it on the floor. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy. I am an Ole Miss Rebel! Watch the videos from yesterday, right? Yeah. And how do we feel? Good. They look good, right? Yeah. Do they look great? Yeah. The synchronization is, is great. <laughs> I think the spacing is getting there. But I think we need, to, we need to take it from good to great. Well, Nationals basically is a huge competition where all the universities and colleges come together and they compete against each other. The fans see all the front stuff and the stuff that we do for our athletics and for marketing and uh, it gives us the opportunity to show people what we can actually do and how talented we really are. As Rebelettes, it's like our thing. I mean, we do a lot for the university and we love to support our football team and our basketball team, but Nationals is our competition where we get to show the rest of the dance world, the rest of the college dance world, what we do here at Ole Miss. Normally, during a normal football game or basketball game, we're very limited and restricted on the type of stunts we can throw, tumbling we can demonstrate, pyramids that we can construct. But then when it comes to nationals, we get to kind of let loose and let it all go. It's kind of a short time period when you think about having to put together um, this really amazing routine and have it hit and it all comes down to this one performance. Once final exams finished on that Friday, we started practice, and that Friday evening we had practice all the way. I think we had 10 to 12 days until we got to go home, and those days consisted of just two days. Two a days, three a days, however many a days it really requires. We are pretty much Trey's own action figures for that period of time. Set! Get up! Get up! I don't care if it falls five times. Get in the air for the pyramid. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Good. Third spot is not as sharp. Two, three, four. We are all Miss. <laughs> Good. Effort was there. I can't want it more than you want it. 
Y'all just kind of thinking it's gonna happen and it's not going to. If you don't want it bad enough, it's not gonna work. Stunts and baskets. What makes you good is when you can hit this and it's the worst time you've ever done it, but you make it stay in the air. You can make it look easy even when it's hard for you. That's when you're good. When we get to like the point where it's very like nitpicky, it, it is mentally draining. Yes, it's physically draining. You have to like really like pace yourself and apply. That's why I was like, make one correction. It takes everyone. One person can screw it up for everybody, but it takes all 16 to hit a routine. I think a lot of the sections, like I said, that we've already done, it's like sinking in and you're doing it correctly. The end is the part that we got to continue to focus on and to make happen. We burn you out to where you feel like you don't have anything left and we still expect it from you. And once you start hitting it, you start expecting it from yourself. So when you feel fresh, it makes it to where you really expect it. Once you hit those practices, once we have all the little things together and like the routine is all in place and then we're to the point where we're just running it from beginning to end, that's where it starts to get tough. Up to the last week of rehearsals, we were basically just running the routines and over and over again, making sure that we could get through them, had enough stamina. There's no way to prep for what type of endurance you're going to need to get through a routine. So um, it's definitely physically demanding and the only way to get through it is you have to physically do the routine. We can run as much on the football field, we can lift as much as we want in the weight room, but the, the fatigue that is a routine is uh, it's, it's hard to explain what it is until you start doing it. So practice is just, you have to run that routine over and over and over. Since I've been here at Ole Miss uh, in the last five years, we've progressed quite a bit as far as our difficulty level. Our coach, Trey, he's known for creating these crazy pyramids that no one's ever done before, no one's ever seen before. So because they're so new, in his mind they work, but sometimes when you actually do it on the mat, it doesn't work like he planned. Um, so we'll spend uh, some more time trying to figure out, you know, which pieces have to change and, and what we have to do to make whatever he imagines us to do work. Captain again, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Folks, welcome on board. We'll be underway here very shortly. One hour and 16 minutes down to Orlando, where they have just some high overcast skies. Good visibility at 62 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Orlando. Please remain seated until the captain has turned all of the fast and seatbelt sign. On behalf of U.S. Airways and American Airlines, we thank you for flying with us. We appreciate your business. We're in Orlando from Nashville. We're just uh, traveling cross country with our really heavy bags, so it's fine. We had a lot of people saying good luck to us at the Memphis airport. We made a lot of new friends. We got this brand new duffel, and it's packed with all of our Rebelette stuff. It's very handy. We look official. Everybody knows who we are. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Allie, that pose though. <laughs> you really just gotta turn. <laughs> if you have. It's a little chin chin. Kelsey tries to get in the middle. I just, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know the angle. I don't like it that close up on my face. I don't like it. There's always like so many teams and then all the like civilians who are just coming to Disney World are like, what's going on? <laughs> they, don't, they don't know what's going on. So we're like, yeah, dance competition. They're like, oh, explains all the droves of girls. plane ride smooth, the wait for the plane ride smooth, we get into Orlando and we are just sitting in the airport <laughs> waiting for these long lines, numerous lines, it wasn't just one line to get on the bus to go to the actual resort. I think we waited like an hour in line just to get on the bus, it was a long wait. But it was kind of fun because like you could see the dynamics of other teams, like some people walk around with boom boxes like singing through the line and then we were singing Uptown Funk because that's all we know how to sing. and. It was fun. I mean, like, that was fun. We got on the bus, but then we got on the bus, and Carly's like, you get to the hotel, grab a snack, like, we've got to get to the place. Even though you have a schedule at Nationals, it's completely out of your hands. I mean, you can't control the transportation system because we don't have our own there. And so 
that was kind of hectic. You know, we get to the hotel and it's changed real fast. We're getting on the bus, we're going to practice, and we haven't eaten. Well, actually, we missed our first practice. So that's that's there. There we are. And then, or now we're gonna eat and then hopefully go not full miss out the dance. One. And we can't miss the second one because then we'd be really just messed up and we can't do that. And we're moving with a quickness. <laughs> Always with, always, always, with always with the quickness. Always with the quickness. Always with the quickness. We don't move slow. <laughs> Never. <laughs> but we obviously do because you see everyone else way ahead of us, so there's that. <laughs> we've been prepping for about a month or so. The girls, you know, especially with our new ones, we've been kind of telling them what nationals are, what to expect, kind of thing. But it's one of those things you don't really know until you get there. It was amazing seeing that for the first time. Like, I've never dreamed of anything like it. Seeing the stage. Like, you just go and you're like, yes, like, this is what I'm used to. It's a stage. To see those eyes light up, it's a, it's a different kind of thing when you, for the first time, for a college nationals experience. For me, the first practice has a lot to do with getting my nerves out. It's the first time in the atmosphere. So, all of those nerves, all that adrenaline that you have, you can kind of get it all out in that first practice. The initial practice is really to get them out of the gym here and into a different environment to where they see the lights are different and they see that other people are around, other teams are around. I think the main purpose is to have everyone on the team be able to be in the venue and be able to see like what warm-ups are going to be like. The first practice was surreal. Um, walk in there, I believe it is trying to get used to the environment and getting used to being around all these other teams that are going to be doing hard stuff and you see them and you're kind of like, wow, like it's just to kind of get the jitters out. Got 45 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Now hinge and don't bridge. That was much prettier. Just lost some momentum. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five. There are two more panels and more space, so don't crowd each other on center, okay? I don't think anybody actually showed any nervousness, and I think we were all pretty calm and like collected, and we, I feel like we kept everything together. If you're not focused going in that very first day, then it's kind of going to set the tone for the whole week. And luckily, we got it turned around and had a great first practice, in my opinion. They were calm. It was one of the best um, first day rehearsals that I've ever had in my experience at Nationals. We're heading to a studio with Colorado and Southeastern, and we're gonna practice with them for like six hours. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh, I don't know anything about studio. We don't know where we're going. We're going. Somewhere like somewhere. an hour away. We just show up and dance whenever they tell us to. No, the special thing about it is that you can take a nap on the way there. Yeah, that's, true. that's it's a long special. car ride, so we get nap time. I'm all about that. So Friday was new to me. We've never done a practice like that. Normally because we're commuting 14 hours to Orlando, you know, on those days. But um, so Friday was new. Our studio practice was at Dance Mania and it was an all day event. <laughs> we woke up that morning, got breakfast, went straight to the studio. We were there with two other teams and um, we just practiced, like just our normal practice. We started with jazz and then every like hour and a half or so we would show the other teams like different sections of our dances. It was never a competitive basis between us. It was more like a sisterhood. We're all there, we all feel the exact same way. We've all been dancing, we're all so tired and you know there's two days left of it but it's just we're all on the same level at that point emotionally. I also think that it was good for our team to do that because just like I said for the first practice to kind of get our nerves out, the studio practice was kind of the same way because then we have an audience, we have a competitive audience and they're looking at us kind of analyzing, I mean everyone was doing it, analyzing the dance scene like oh they did this, they did this, like did you see that? To me the most important thing is with dance is you're not just dancing to music or you're not just dancing to lyrics but it's the emotion that you put behind it. And so Carly had us turn off the lights in the studio and we just listened to the, you know, to the lyrics of Here I Go Again and we collaboratively came up with our meaning as a team of what it means to us. When you sit there and just listen to the lyrics and how they're sung and like in what intensity and what emotion is put behind the, um, like the singer, like what they put into it, then you can be like, this is what I should feel. This is what it means to me versus like, 
oh, I'm supposed to be doing a leg on that counter. I'm supposed to be turning here. We went through the movements with the lights off so that we ourselves could feel the emotion individually so that as a group that we could portray the same thing. In that room, in that moment, it was good for us because we could kind of, as a group, get our thoughts together and figure out how we wanted our dance to portray the university. And like turning off the lights is just always, I think it's a dancer's thing. We just like to turn the lights off and you kind of just get in a mood. The team dinner on Friday was so much fun. Um, we had like this own, our own separate room like blocked off just for us and we were the loudest people in the restaurant, of course. We had a large group of, I think, 58 that came, um, and it was great to, for us to be able to be together, but then also have our supporters there. The first thing I said to my mom when I got to that dinner was, I was like, Mom, I am so tired. I cannot go on. I'm done. And she was like, no, you're not done. You can do it. You have, like, two more days, and this is, gonna, this is the best part. You got all the hard work out, and now it's just time to perform. I know for me, my parents have come to every competition I've ever done as a child. So it's like your parents always give you that good luck hug or that go get them, you know, like their little pep talk. Tomorrow's the competition day. It was nice to see our parents and relax before we had to be uptight again. And um, I think for a lot of people that was just, it was a stress relief. It's just fun to like hang out and just chill together. And it was like a nice calming time before the chaos the next day. <laughs> As we went into competition, Friday night is obviously a key point um, with everything kicking in gear on Saturday. You know, we've we prepared a lot for this. There's a lot of anxiety. We've had some fun and kind of released some stress. We've you know spent time with our families, and now it's just kind of it's time to go. So. Um, I always like to have with my teams when we go to compete, I like to um, have a team meeting the night before everything starts, just kind of like bring it back together, bring everything back to focus to why we were here and what we've been putting all this work into, um, and just really give them that boost of confidence that we need. How do you feel? Yeah. How was today? Cool. Awesome. Yeah? So far, I feel like it's been a really good trip. Um, how do we feel about tomorrow? Good. Ready. Excited. Excited. Are you ready? I have a few things I need you to do. I need you to fight. Yeah, fight with your team. You got two minutes. That's Only it. two, y'all. We put all this in. It's two minutes, so you gotta fight through. You think you're gonna die? I promise you're not. It's not just about you or you or you. It's about us. So you've got to really think about your team. I know maybe you're worried about hitting your tricks or getting to the spot or the lift or whatever it is, but you've got to worry about your team. Remember like we talked about when you come off the floor, maybe that wasn't your best performance, maybe that was our best performance. You know, it takes all of us, so just really keep all that in mind. When we got back to the hotel, we got, we just like met in Carly's room and I thought it was gonna be like a rundown, like meet here tomorrow, get this done, let's do all this. And so it was kind of like a rundown, we did that. And then she gave us letters from our parents. She had our parents um, write letters to us individually on just how proud they are of us and everything that we've accomplished and for me, that was even more special because my family couldn't come to nationals. And you know, as a senior, everything is so bittersweet. Everything is your last of everything. And so um, it put everyone in the right mindset that we were ready for the next day. You know, the grandmothers that write the sweetest messages that bring you know that bring you tears. Then there's the little brothers that write, huh, somebody's, Mackenzie's brother, I think, wrote something that was really funny and cute. Boys, little brothers don't really care about dance. They don't want to come watch you. They don't want to do that. But so they try, they're like, break a leg or good luck or whatever I'm supposed to say. I don't know how this goes. You will definitely win because you are a star, so shiner, sparkle, whatever y'all do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably like snap, crackle, pop. <laughs> PPS, all these famous people told me to give you notes too. Beyonce. <laughs> tag for the weekend, dumb <laughs> I remember the first dance recital you had and what your dad said, of course he was joking, but the first few steps were taken, step, tap, step, tap, and he looked at your mom and said, we paid how much for that? <laughs> I got one for my mom and my dad and they're just very, it's something, it's, there's something about your parents telling you how proud they are of you, and it's just, it always makes me happy. One of my sisters actually asked me to be her bridesmaid on that night. It just let us share, like, the moment 
with ourselves and like our family, even though like the ones couldn't be there. Like we still got to like share that moment with them and they could still like wish us luck and they drew us pictures and stuff. And it's just always sentimental. Anytime you talk about home with us because we don't get to go home a lot. So um, I think it really made everybody just like emotional and sentimental and we just all like appreciated everything a lot more. That meeting in all was just kind of just a continuation of what the dinner was for us. It was just Carly's way of saying, okay, look, all the hard work is done. This is what we have worked so hard for. So now let's just put it all out there on the floor. My parents are doing this. They've been following me everywhere for dance and they do so much for me. And it just kind of like puts it in perspective. I'm like, they do all this because they're my biggest fan. And so it's just nice to know that you have like a little fan base back at home. Once you've made your section, you want to make sure that the section is not too big and then you want to put the rest of it up out of the way. Um, part off a small little piece. Get your straightener. Make sure that you get really close to the root. That's the most important part. As long as you get the root, everything else should be good. Like that. What probably to most people is a big bag, but this is actually kind of small. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it's in that pouch. You just gotta look for it. I mean, we can all do hair and makeup, but like, okay. only two people can do this hair, and only two people can do this makeup. I hate my makeup today. <laughs> giant box that I carry around, but that was too big. That would have been considered a carry-on. It doesn't. Go watch it. Go watch it. That's less air resistance on the standing floor. Saturday we started, we wanted to get the day started off right, so we got up early, got some breakfast, the girls, you know, we tried to allot plenty of time for the girls to get dressed and get their hair and makeup done and to head over to the venue. We kn knew going in that, you know, this could be, you know, our last day performing. We didn't want it to be and we were fighting for that, but the way that the competition sets up um, with each division, there's a semifinal round and then there's a finals round. We knew going into the competition in jazz and in hip hop that we were going against a lot of teams that are very strong and very well known for, you know, Know, their performances at nationals. Once you're there, all you can do and all you can bring is, is is exactly what you've practiced and what you've rehearsed and you know what you have worked on for six to eight weeks and so you just you can't compare yourself to anyone else once you actually get there. Got there and you see everybody's costumes, you see everybody's people are practicing, girls are yelling everywhere because they yell in the middle of their dances, so you're like constantly distracted, but you're trying to like zone in. Then we get to semis, and we're in our costumes, walking backstage, have our headphones in, and I just am thinking the whole time, tunnel vision, like tunnel vision, tunnel vision, because you're gonna freak out if you don't have tunnel vision. I think on the rehearsal floor, we had a really good rehearsal. They were focused. Um, it was loud. There was a lot of stuff going on, that nine minute rehearsal we had before we went on, but the girls were feeling good. I think they were um, feeling very comfortable. That's important, I think, especially in the dance world, because before we even actually take the stage, we go behind the scenes, and there are six different squads back there on the practice mats running their routines, and you can't be sidetracked. You can't watch what they're doing and say, oh, well, that girl can do seven leg hold turns. I mean, I can't do that. Like, that just, it psychs you out. You can't look at the other teams and wish that you could do something because all you can do is what you've been, or what you've brought. So before we actually took the stage as a team, we just always pray just, you know, that we'll dance for God because ultimately he's given us these talents and that, you know, we can just dance for him. You know, in the back, you're, Give it, everybody's giving a pep talk. Everybody's like, come on guys, we can do this. All right, we can do, like, this is what we need to do. You've got to do this. Think about this. So everybody's just like shooting their, like, advice at everybody and everybody's just like so excited. And it was honestly like very special because you can just like feel everybody is on the same page. 
Honestly, running onto that stage and seeing the cheerleaders that were there supporting us, all of our family and even like friends from other colleges that were in our division were down in front yelling for us. I was one of the first ones on the stage. And so being a freshman and being like the first one on the stage and running up the ramp, like all the emotions just hit you and you're like, oh, this is what I was meant to do. Like I'm meant to be on the stage. And I remember getting really nervous when I stepped on the stage. And I walked on the stage and I was like, oh no, all my nerves just hit me. I was like, I don't know how to do this. I just remember walking out onto the stage and the cheerleaders, our family, everyone sitting around and the cheerleaders are saying the hottie toddy chant and I, I, start, I started crying. And we hadn't even started dancing. I'm like, this is the best feeling ever. We have so much support. the songs of yesterday well i made up my mind cause here i go you know i'm looking for an answer cause i know what it means oh, to walk along the lonely street of dreams and here i go again oh, From Oxford, Mississippi, let's hear it again for the Rebelettes of Ole Miss. On deck, we have the College of St. Benedict. Was that fun? Oh my gosh, your face after that leg. Your face after that leg. Awesome. That was so good. Was that fun? That was fun. My butt hurt. Good job. Good job, girl. Good job. 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 Good they did a great job. Um, I mean, overall, it was one of the best times they had performed in their routine. So as a coach, that's all I can really ask. With the emotion that we decided to portray, I think that we absolutely portrayed it. Actually, I don't even remember being on the stage, but <laughs> the next time we were just walking off and we're all so proud and like, we're all like crying tears of joy because we know it's like the best time we've ever done it. After they performed, we got to watch the playback, which that happens immediately afterwards. And um, they were all so excited, tears and laughs and smiles and hugs and it just was a really great moment. Jazz announcements were, um, that wasn't the best part of nationals. I felt pretty confident, but I mean, you just never know. Like we said, I think there's kind of that gray area when you kind of jump down um, in that middle area that we were at. So, you know, we just, we held hands, you know, and just closed our eyes and just pray that they would say our name. They start calling out all the teams and you'd be surprised how many University of M's there are. Michigan, Minnesota, like every time our heart dropped. All of our heads are down and then they announce all of the teams in finals and they say University of Minnesota, University of something else with an M and we're like, okay, okay. And then they're like, and the final team and it wasn't us. You know, we waited and waited and they were calling schools and they never called us and they got to the last one and it still wasn't us and at that point in time my mindset was it fueled my fire for the next one.
Well, when we got back to the hotel, um, it was great to be greeted and welcomed by the cheerleaders because they know we both have kind of been going through this holiday season together. Um, while we're practicing separately, we still do a lot of things together and we have each other's backs. We're walking in with all of our bags. I mean, we still have our heads held high because, like I said, we, we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, even though we didn't make it into finals. I think I'm one of the first three to come around the corner and Tyler Jackson just picks me up. Everybody started crying again because they were all waiting outside their rooms. The cheerleaders were just sitting there and they all clapped for us when we came in and that was like so special. It was just so overwhelming to know that there was outside support that still believed in us, that knew that we could do it the next time around. And even though we had just found out that we didn't make it into finals, it was, I mean, it was uplifting and we were like, okay, now we have another job. It's time to go into our next dance. So we were like, all right, it's time, like, let's go back, kill hip hop, let's show them what we got, let's show them what Ole Miss is all about. It just really kind of like helps solidify, you know, that team aspect of the spirit squads. Everyone competes in semifinals, and they take the top 12 to 15 teams from semifinals to finals. The importance of semis, no matter what, is for us to make it into finals. Um, it's a tournament style type thing where if we don't make it through one round, we don't get it automatic to the, to the final show. I could tell we were we were ready um, going into semis. There was still you know, a little bit of the shakiness, the little deer in the headlight looks for some of the freshmen. Slow down a little bit. Take a deep breath in. Get set. Come on, guys. Relax. Take a deep breath and calm down a little bit, OK? Take a deep breath and calm down. Slow down just a tad. Slow down. Relax. Now take the floor in the Division I Please have the welcome the Rebels from the University of Mississippi.
Mississippi. Semi routine that looked really good. Um, energy was kind of low, but you could tell they were very nervous. Um, with our young team this year, we kind of expected that. We had some falls, we had some mistakes. We had a, um, two falls in stunts, and we had a fall in a pyramid. Trey and I knew that, you know, not everything hit at that point. The kids didn't know that yet. Um, so they're walking out the floor and we met up with them uh, for the playback. And during the playback, they got to see like what they needed to fix. A um, couple things dropped, but it wasn't anything we were too stressed about, too worried about. The kids felt really good about uh, with their performance and knew that they could um, up the ante for finals. Relax. It's fine. We're fine. You're fine. Hey, we're fine, guys. Good job. I Good thought work. you were going to hit a perfect one tonight. Yeah, I thought, I we thought did you too. were going to hit a perfect one tonight. 1-1-1 one, one, one on this side had problems. Y'all got, it's got to have a little more height. It didn't have the height to get up over her knee. We got the mark. Okay. That's okay. Relax a little bit. You got that one out of the way. The cheer schedule and the dance schedule are completely different and they overlap a lot. So right after the playback, we had to hurry up and grab all our stuff, rush over to the other venue to make sure we were there for the Rebel at Semi Hip Hop performance. We were ready coming into hip hop, we were definitely all on the same page. Everyone's fire was fueled, for sure. It was a different feeling, though, because we had already competed once. We had already seen what some of the other teams were bringing. Now, it was more like, okay, we are Ole Miss, and we're here to show you, like, we have this. We we know what we're doing. It's kind of like your whole mood changes from, like, let's just go out and have a good time and, like, show them, and, but, like, it was like, let's show them. Like, let's show them that we deserve to be here. Put your hands together now for our final team in Division 1A Hip Hop. This is the University of Mississippi. This is a one-time exclusive. It's your Come on, come on, come on. Let me work it. Let me work it. Again, we're extremely proud. You know, we had several different elements in the dance that, you know, definitely expressed who Ole Miss is. I mean, we had Fins Up and Lock the Vault, and Rebel Nation understood that. Honestly, I think it was the best time we ever done it. We watched the playback right after we got off stage. There was nothing that could crush the feeling of what 
we had just accomplished. I think that was another thing that went into like our attitude towards it was that we were doing it like not only for us but for Ole Miss. Like we were like, this is what Ole Miss is about. Like y'all need to come watch us at football games. Y'all need to come watch us at basketball games because like we're an exciting place. This is the last verdict. Um, this was you know our last dance, and so it, that to me it was so fast. We literally finished the routine, and then we went and sat down, and then they already had the announcement. So I mean we were still like catching our breaths. We were last to compete in our category, so we didn't have the time to transition from. Oh, we just did so great to like, kind of calm down, grab a bite to eat, watch the other dances. It was like bam, bam, bam. We went straight into the audience and then it was time to announce finals. And so we're all like sitting there, we're all holding hands and we're all like just praying like, please like just let us make it. This is our last shot. Like if not, then we're done. And you're like all this work and I don't want to be done right now. Like I want to go tomorrow. Literally, I think everybody's school that goes to nationals is the University of M something. So it's like University of Memphis, University of Minnesota. I just remembered them saying, I think the last team that they called was University of Michigan. And they always, you know, do the slow dramatic, the University of Mit, and then, you know, then it's a complete letdown when it's not Mississippi. At that point in time, I lost it. I was extremely emotional because I knew at that point there was nothing that we could do to, to change it. You know, I mean, we just didn't make it. I think at this point people were crying. I know I was crying, and um, so it was just hard to like see like all of our hard work, um, and like we didn't make it to finals. But also like we just had to keep telling ourselves like it was the best that we have ever done it. Like so much energy was put into it, so much passion, so much power. It kind of hurt more than the jazz because you're like it's over now. Like the shot's gone, but. Still, everybody was very proud of each other, but it was definitely a little more emotional than the Jazz. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You should be proud of you. You should be proud of each other. You should be proud of your teammates. Be proud of yourself. Yes, you killed it. You did what we came to do. Exactly what we came to do. Game on. Two very awesome performances. You killed it. You were confident. You held each other up. You had fun. We're still having fun. You grew. Everything has been fabulous. I'm so proud of you guys. Here we go. I think it was a huge bonding experience for our team and I think that at that point in time when we were just completely defeated we had to come together and support each other with our love for each other and so from us to go from like being really sad to like happy and like we're just here with each other like we were just happy to be in Orlando happy to be in Disney World we wanted all of us to know that we were there for each other and that ultimately we love each other just like we would love our family if we were at home with them for Christmas. We spent our Christmas break together as a family. We did good. We liked it and we showed up and Ole Miss loves us and they're all there for us and we're just going to come back next year with an even bigger bang. I have no regrets that that's my last time. I left everything out on the floor that I could and I know that the team did as well. Everybody was so proud of each other and I think that was so important in the whole process. That's really what makes a team successful. Like if you're willing to do anything for the girl standing next to you, you're just like, you feel like so secure and so just like content with your team and you didn't it didn't matter what anybody else thought about it because we were happy with each other. I don't remember how tired I was. I don't remember how bad my body was hurting. I remember how much fun I had with my team and how much closer we became. It was just a great moment for our program. It was a great moment for the girls. It was a great moment for the team and their families just to kind of like share that time together because whether, you know, somebody's dad had ever met this rebel up before, like he was there for her and, you know, a hug or, you know, you did a great job and they were just really, really supportive and it was really very important for them to be there and it meant a lot to the girls. Worlds is a new competition that they just started doing maybe three or four years ago. Um, it's just an opportunity for 
teams from other countries to be able to come and compete against the teams from the U.S. Some teams don't do it because they just feel like, well, we come all the way down to Orlando for nationals, so we're just going to do nationals. But our coach is like, we're doing it. We're, we're always doing it no matter what because it just gives us an extra practice before the big night. It's something that people know, oh, Ole Miss will be there. They know Ole Miss will be there every single year because we do. We were trying to correct the flaws we had made at semifinals and just boost up our confidence again for the real thing finals. And it also gives us a chance to like run the routine, get some jitters out in the morning before finals. We tend to usually be a better team after we've run the routine at least once. Worlds was a little like semis, kind of, the way we felt. We felt like we did pretty good. Puerto Rico looked awesome. UCF looked awesome. They had a couple drops, but so did we, and we knew it was gonna be up in the air. We went out there and gave it our all, and that was probably the best routine we had done, I would say. Our world's performance was awesome. Um, we did really good. Um, yes, a couple of things uh, dropped, but we felt really good about the performance. Um, so far, up to that point, we kind of were, we were the best team going in. We did get a chance to watch the team that um, ultimately did beat us at Worlds, um, but that's okay. Um, they also are, sad to say, our same rivals and team that is in our, um, the national championship part. All right, we're ready to get started with the awards. Let me make a round of applause for all these teams from around the world. Eight so nations great competing. To see so many countries come together, enjoying cheerleading. All right, now it's time to announce the Team Cheer Large co-ed results. A lot of teams from around the world. Let's hear for these incredible athletes. Great performances. Two incredible programs. Also competing tonight as well in the Div Division 1A National Finals. Second place for 2015 World University Championships goes to Ole Miss University of Mississippi from the USA. We knew it would be up in the air between us and UCF, and we ended up getting second, which was great. It was great. We, what, we would have hoped for first, obviously, but um, I don't think we were too far behind. We got second in the world. That was exciting because that showed how hard we had worked for that, and it showed that it paid off in the end. It was exciting. Um, just that moment, getting the trophy, um, we were pleased. We knew we hadn't done our best at Worlds either, but we knew we still had one more time to show people what we had and what we could do with it. It definitely boosted our confidence going into finals, I would say. Because when we went into finals, we were very confident and we were ready to go because we knew we weren't that far behind. And if we just hit it, we had a huge chance of like placing really well. And to know that we were that close to UCF at Worlds, we were like, we got this, we can do it. As soon as we came off that mat and as soon as we got our trophy and headed back to the hotel, it was time to, you know, freshen up a little bit, put on a new uniform, and get ready to go again.
Watching, watching the playback after we were done, after we had walked off, we knew that we did not meet our standards. We did not compete that routine how we wanted to. I remember this very vividly. It was actually very depressing because we knew we had worked so hard, like I said, since day one. And for us to go out there and do that, it was very upsetting because we know we could do so much better. And then watching our playback, just the the wind was sucked out, to say the least, that no one was really, I mean, uh, I don't even remember watching anything past um, the baskets. I don't even, I don't even think I watched the first pyramid and anything after that, just because I knew what was coming. I knew the pyramid fell. After I watched it and after we got off the floor, I was like, hold on, that, that wasn't real. Like, rewind, and then just wanted to go back out there and, and do it again and do it that much better, but you only get one shot. Things happen, you know, mistakes happen. Um, it wasn't our best performance. We weren't happy with it. But at the same time, we're a program that's building. As coaches, we have to remind them that, you know, we still need to hold our heads up high. There's still people looking at us. Um, you know, we still are old Miss, period. We told them, you know, we win together, we lose together. And as a team and as a family, that this is just what happens. And sad to say in our, you know, in cheerleading, you get that one shot, that 2.30 on the mat, and that's it. I think a lot of coaches would have looked at that and they would have yelled at their um, squad members or cursed them out or made them feel even worse. Um, and I'm just really thankful that Trey and Arika aren't that type of coach and that instead of bringing us even further down, they actually lifted us up and they made us not feel as bad about the routine as we were feeling before. We walked out of there not really knowing what we would get. We knew it wasn't going to be good. We pretty much knew it wasn't going to be top five, but we had just hoped for the best. We kind of already knew we were going to drop out of the top five, um, so that was already kind of a blow. And we kind of prepped the team for that as well, like don't be surprised if we're not in the top five. You know, it, it is what it is. And, we, and the way we explain it is you can't drop two pyramids and expect to win. It just doesn't happen. Sitting in the horseshoe, like waiting for awards, as the announcer announces, you know, each place, they'll announce one place and just be like, all right, it wasn't us. We've moved up an another place, and then they'll announce another team. You're like, all right, all right, that wasn't us either. And we knew the only deductions we had were four points. We dropped two pyramids, and a pyramid fall was two points. So we knew that was our deductions. It was still nerve wracking, though, even though we knew we weren't going to be that high up. We just wanted 
to get as high as possible with that routine. Ninth place, Oh Miss! Howdy, howdy. We still ended up finishing top 10, and being top 10 in the country is still a big accomplishment. It's not as high as we hope to place, and it's not as high as we've placed in the past, but at the end of the day, it's still top 10. They know that they're a top five team. I know they're a top five team, but like I said, things happen, and we just build on it and, and move on and, and try to do better next year. We knew in our hearts that that, uh, that wasn't our best, um, but on, as on the bus ride home, you know, coming coming out of those finals, that we knew that there was there was more to be done. Ole Miss is not a ninth place team, though. We'll make sure people know that. Talk to me about your love for this team. Mm. Yeah, you got to give me a minute. I love every last one of my kiddos, whether they're on large, whether they're on small, every one of them is very special to me. When you look back at the journey that we had starting, you know, at the very beginning of the year at tryouts, everybody, you know, you never know back in April what, what the year is gonna bring. I think the approach that we took this year was like, let's have a good time. Like, let's not set some goal that if it doesn't happen, it ruined the whole reason that we went. And so like, obviously finals is the end goal, but like our main end goal was like, let's be proud of each other. Being a freshman and getting the opportunity to go through this experience was definitely one to remember. Just the journey. The journey was a great one. You get to spend time with the, you know, 16 of your best friends. You get to go out there on, on a mat uh, and perform what you love to do, what, what, we, what we look forward to. Those highlights, I think that's where our love comes from because from the early mornings, I mean, putting on fake eyelashes at 4 a.m. is not fun, but like, you have 25 sisters that are doing it with you. It really brings them close. It, it's not just like a team anymore. They become a family here because they spend every day together. I mean, the practices were hard and it was hard work and we definitely focused, but for the most part, we were there just getting closer as a team. I think for once we were a, we became that family that we needed to be and we uh, we loved each other that uh, whether it was, you know, the new freshman on the team or it was, you know, your, your seniors, whatever it was, that it was no one's better than the other one. It's we're all here, there's a purpose, there's a reason why we're on this mat. Oh, I love my teammates so much. They're literally like my, my second family. We could not have done any of that. We couldn't have gotten to where we were without one person on that team. And we're there for each other during the good times, the bad times, the hard times, the stressed out times. Like, if you ever need anything, you know that you can call on one of your teammates and they'll be there for you. From the beginning to the end, it was like, oh my gosh, we're seeing the same people every day, to at the end where we were like, I love y'all. I couldn't imagine not having this team. I um, would struggle through college if I didn't have this team. We're always there for each other. It's just cool to like have that group of people. I always know I can go to them. Like, if I wanna hang out on a Saturday night or if something traumatic just happened in my life, I know those are the people I'm gonna to go to first, and that's what's really special to me.